Okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about one of the more innovative solutions for dealing with the beach sand erosion problem we're having around the United States. On the East Coast, after the uh, hurricane uh, superstorm Sandy, they did note off the coast of New Jersey, they had trenches uh, that were dug from the uh, high surf and storm surge. Well, as these trenches were dug by the surf coming in, and these trenches were left after it had receded, um, this causes the normal tide to erode the sand to a greater degree because now as the water comes over onto the land, it starts churning sooner, which takes away the sand rather than delivering it in the swash zone. So, the solution is obviously to get rid of the trenches, but that means you have to go underwater and fill them back in, which means you need uh, some kind of giant caterpillar tractor that can work while it's submerged. Uh, we can do this with robotics. We can do it many ways. Once we fill in those trenches, there's another thing we need to be doing, and that is to use some tricks from fluid dynamics, and that is to measure the slope of the land and put chevron devices protruding from the bottom of the seafloor just below the waves, perhaps out not more than 100 yards, and figure out the exact height and size of these chevrons and where exactly to best locate them in order to have more sand delivered rather than being taken away um, on the shoreline. And once we did this, uh, this will prevent the, the beach erosion to a great degree. Now, one of the problems we have out here in California is that we have the Coastal Commission, which decides who can do what based on environmental controls and everything else. Unfortunately, with all the bureaucracy and red tape, no one dares does anything offshore without the approval, and getting approval could take a decade unless you have the right political influences. Rather than dealing with the bureaucracy, it's time to get this done now because we can't afford to lose more homes in Malibu or up the coast or down the coast in California. The real estate's too valuable, and it really hurts tourism when there isn't any beach sand left for beachgoers. Not to mention the fact that there are many areas with endangered species and, and environmental areas that have been set aside uh, where no one is allowed to go because it's for... Uh, uh, various species that are having uh, trouble surviving. And once we let the beach erosion go, there's less uh, activity for animals to flourish. There's less, less um, vegetation close to the water. Um, the actuaries and um, all the, uh, uh, the areas where there's small lagoons and things uh, are just not there anymore. And so if we could solve this problem, we solve uh, a problem for homeowners, property values, tourism, and everything else. Not to mention that the more beach erosion we get, the more trouble we're going to be in later if we have a rising of sea level, let's say, or during big storm surges. Because once that barrier is gone, there's nothing to protect you from the high storm surge coming in and washing ashore. And, uh, and that causes intense problems. You can get a large storm on the Pacific side, although we don't get many in California that are that are like the hurricanes we get on the East Coast. But we could have tsunamis and other things, and we need that barrier out there to protect us. Now, once we get a big storm surge or a tsunami or anything else, it does put in trenches. We need to fill in the trenches, and then we need to put some sort of uh, system out there, and but still allow the water to get out um, through the rip tides and the rip current to the rip head. So we need the, the flow of water coming in, but we need it to deliver us the sand and, and, and up onto the swash zone, pushing it gradually up onto the beach with each, each tide that comes in. And if we can have each wave bring a little bit more sand rather than co constantly taking it away um, as it migrates down the coast based on the uh, direction of the, of the, uh, the waves and the currents, um, we can do a lot to solve these problems, and we can save ourselves a lot of money 
because trying to restore a beach once it's half gone is a tremendous amount of cost for our state and federal parks that happen to be in public areas that have been set aside for uh, people to go to the beach or, like I was saying, for the environmental areas. So this is something we should think about and really it's time to think outside the box, do something a little bit different. And we have all the CAD CAM software and we have all the fluid dynamics specialists and we know all the math. This isn't rocket science, well it is rocket science, but it's, it's fluid dynamics and it's not as difficult as it sounds. This is all possible. This is stuff that we do all the time whenever we build a new harbor or we do dredging or we do anything else. We have the technology, we have the knowledge, we know uh, the mathematical equations, although they get complicated and big, it's just uh, f over x, it's just functions of change uh, based on the, the dynamics, uh, the, the speed of the tide and the, the amount of uh, dynamic pressure of the wave and uh, the, the, uh, the amount of water between the sea level uh, that happens at, at low and high tide and uh, the, the slope of the land. Uh, going underneath. And we can measure all this stuff with uh, acoustic sensors and, and a little UA, uh, uh, AUVs, uh, autonomous underwater vehicles, or UUVs, underwater um, unmanned vehicles. And we can map all this, get all the information, and then decide where we want to put the chevrons or devices or what shapes are the very best. Maybe a half moon shape might be best. And, you know, it'll be better for the surfers too because it puts the waves that they want to surf on uh, at a certain point, very predictable, because as it comes in, it, it, it puts the wave up and, and, and prevents it from, from digging those trenches, but also it's always in the same place because that's the way we've contoured the land for our needs as humans and also for the needs of maintaining the beaches. Um, this is good for the, the seagulls and the the uh, the uh, sea mammals that would come in and uh, uh, kick back on the on the beach. These are areas which they uh, they can enjoy just like us, and it prevents us from having these uh, these rocky coastlines, which end up uh, where we're in a barrier situation and we have to start putting out big rocks and things like that just to protect us. And rather than then going to all that trouble and all that expense and putting these rocks out and then having it, it, the rocks erode and crumble and fall down and then have to put more out because we don't want to lose a road or a bike lane or a railroad track or a bridge. Um, by doing this, we will be able to um, have uh, safe infrastructure, bridges, uh, breakwaters, uh, stilt homes that are on the beach like in Malibu and places like that. And we can still have our state parks with beautiful beaches. And there's no reason we can't have it all. Um, now, some would say, well, you know, we're, we're, we're messing around with the environment and it was supposed to be this way and we shouldn't put the houses near the beach anyway and we shouldn't be putting state parks at the beach and we should let the beach continue a road because that's where it gets the nutrients for the sea and all this other stuff. That may be true, but um, we have to think about right now about it intruding and taking away all the beach. I mean, if you're in Boca Raton or if you're in one of these places where, um, you know, the beach is your tourism. The beach is income to your community. If you don't have a reason to go there, people won't. Uh, this drives down real estate values. It, 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 it kills employment. Um, it kills, it's just really economically a bad situation. But it's also an unsafe situation because if you have more debris and um, more erosion, you're asking for trouble when a big storm comes and you're not ready for it because that big storm will come in and take out things that you don't want to have taken out. And that puts even more pollution and garbage in the ocean that shouldn't be there. Look at the stuff that's still washing up from the Japan earthquake tsunami. Um, they weren't prepared to have all that water come in, take all that debris and push it back out to sea. And it's ending up on the coastline uh, uh, from, from Oregon all the way down to uh, Southern California. So, um, Hey, we, we don't want it here. Uh, we don't want the debris in the ocean. Uh, I'm sure the, the uh, sea life doesn't want our debris. I mean, uh, let's get real. This is environmentally friendly, and it's time to tell the Coastal Commission that, hey, we appreciate all you're doing to help the environment, but it's time to get real. We've got to save our beaches. Um, and so that's what I'd like to leave you with today. There is a way to solve this problem. It's really simple. It's fluid dynamics and mathematics and things that we know how to do. It's not 
Um, it's not impossible. It's not a trick. It's not um, a game. It's not even uh, debatable whether or not it will work. Of course it will work. This is how things work. This is, this is nature, and, and, and we've come to master it uh, for our own benefit, but also for the benefit of what we're trying to do. It's the least invasive thing that we can do to protect all concerned and to be good stewards of the environment, because I know all you viewers out there are interested in that as well. Okay, so that was my topic for today. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Or, you know, shoot me an email. I run a think tank, and uh, it's uh, worldthinktank.net, and I also uh, write some ebooks and uh, about 30,000 articles online now about various topics, things that are important to uh, the human endeavor, which uh, spans all topics, really. Thank you very much for your time, and I'd love to hear from you. We need to solve this problem, and it is solvable.